Hello everyone and my name is Zach and I'm here for the first episode of Rotorama's new car reviews. Now today we're not going to be talking about a particularly brand new car, but instead we're going to be talking about my personal vehicle, the 2020 Toyota Tacoma SR four-wheel drive V6. Now I'm not particularly a truck guy, however about a year ago my wife and I had decided that we both did not enjoy having two small cars, her having a 2018 Volkswagen Jetta and me a 2019 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport, which I loved that car by the way, but I decided it was time that in Wisconsin we should have a truck in the family so that during the winter time we have a safe and reliable form of transportation but we can also enjoy the outdoors more with more options for activities like having a boat, a snowmobile, or an ATV. Now bear with me as today's video is pretty much just a demo for me to get used to working with cars as well as working with all of my new equipment. And now for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my 2020 Tacoma inside and out. And then after we take a look at the exterior bits and the interior portion of the truck, we're gonna take it on the road for a test drive and talk about some of the driver assist features, how it drives and so on and so forth. Now, starting with the exterior look of the truck, this is probably one of the best looking light trucks you can buy today. Now, there are a lot of competitors in this segment, like the Chevy Colorado, the Ford Ranger, and the Nissan Frontier, but in my opinion, and half of the reason why I bought this truck is, it looks so good. It's got a stance like no other. It sits up nice and tall with lots of ground clearance, and it also has a front end that is not overplayed or covered in chrome. It just looks like a smooth, clean pickup truck. Now this is the 2020 SR model, meaning it's a slight step above the base model. Most would consider this a baseline truck or maybe even a work truck. However, for me, I feel like this fits the bill for most people's truck needs. When you look at this truck, you're gonna notice that the headlights look very nice, futuristic and sporty. However, in the 2020 SR model, they are a basic regular traditional headlight, they're not LEDs. With that being said, as you go up in trim levels, you can get LED lights if you are into that sort of thing. I actually like the traditional bulb because when you're on the road at night or during rain, it doesn't reflect so crazy bright and white and allows me to see a little bit more on the road. It may not go as far as the LEDs, however, it creates a lot less illusions as you're driving in those conditions. On the SR model, you'll notice that you do not get fog lights, but for a couple hundred bucks, you can get some really nice LED cubes from a company like Cali Off-Road. Now underneath the front bumper, there was a air dam installed from the factory. I had taken that off mostly because I wanted to pick up a little bit more ground clearance in the winter time and when you're off-road, but I also think it looks a lot tougher when you don't have a big giant chunk of flat plastic in front of the vehicle. Looking at the grill, the SR model has a very basic front grill, very big, chunky. It is made of plastic like most cars grills are these days. Now, something that really sticks out in the grill though is how large the front emblem is. This emblem is huge and for a reason, this actually houses a lot of the inner workings of the safety bits that they have built into this vehicle. Things like pedestrian detection and radar cruise control, a lot of that is controlled by gadgetry up here in this front nose. Also across the windshield, you're gonna notice that there's a little cutout with what appears to be a camera that is actually a camera that helps with your auto headlights and a few of the other safety features working in tandem with what's underneath the badge. Now, this SR is not particularly built for off-road. I believe that it will hold its own in basic off-roading environments like logging trails and other things like that. But if you're planning to go hardcore into the off-road like trail running or crawling, anything like that, and you want a good basic truck to do that with, you're probably going to want to go with something a little bit more expensive like the TRD Sport or the TRD Off-Road more likely. Now on the side profile of the truck, you're going to notice that there's an indent around the fender wells that follows it in perfect contour. It's actually for the SR5 and above trim levels. They have fender flares that come factory on the truck, and these indents are here to add styling to the lower models, but also an area for them to mount the fender flares on the trim levels above. Now I really wanna talk about the rear end of the truck real quick, where you'll see that with the four door configuration, you can only get a five foot bed. Now some truck guys are going to say that that's too small or it's 
not useful, but I find it as an everyday driver of something that I need to park in smaller spaces or something that just needs to haul basic things like a new washing machine or maybe a motorcycle. You can still do all of that with a five foot bed. However, if you plan on hauling a lot of wood or doing anything like construction with the truck, you might wanna opt for something that offers the longer bed. Now, something interesting to note about this bed is that it looks like it has a plastic bed liner in it, but actually the entire bed is made of composite plastics. I've put this thing through the ringer, hauling all sorts of different items, and I can honestly say that I can't tell the difference. It works really well. It's maintained its quality and look. Something useful to note in the back of this all composite bed is that you have tie downs both two in the back, two up front mounted a little high. You've also got this rail system here on both sides of the bed, which is actually where my aftermarket tonneau cover is mounted to, that you can attach these hard plastic tie downs throughout the length of this rail so that you have options and versatility for securing your load over the top or through the back of the bed. In the back, you've also got this nice little container unit here, which you can use to store your trailer hitches or anything like tie downs. And some guys also take those and add power to it. Now, something that I really like about this truck is it's not too overcomplicated. A lot of American truck brands like to throw a ton of gadgets inside of these things. This truck is not like that. It feels like a new truck, but it is also very reminiscent of trucks of old. When you get inside the interior, it feels comfortable. It feels like you've been there before if you've ever driven a Toyota truck in the past. And when you drive the truck, you're going to notice that it drives heavenly in comparison to a lot of other small trucks. In comparison to something like a Ford Ranger or a Colorado, when you hit bumps on the road or you're going off-road and you're bouncing around, you don't really ever feel your bump stops and you also don't ever really feel like it's too loud in the cabin. You can hit potholes with this thing, which I don't recommend, but if you do, it's not gonna be a jarring experience unless it's the size of a sinkhole in Thailand. It's actually pretty enjoyable to drive. But enough about the exterior of this truck, let's hop into the interior and see what that's like. Okay, so now we're in the interior of the truck. And I've gotta say, as a guy who's six foot three, this truck is surprisingly comfortable, even though it's lacking some of the typical movement features of the seats and steering wheel. Something that I wanna cover right away is that seating position. In this truck, you feel more like you're in a car than you would in a typical truck, especially versus American trucks. American trucks are very spacious on the interior. You sit up very high. This truck, you're not sitting like that. You're actually more closer to the floor than you are sitting forward. There is no up and down movement of these seats. However, you can still move them front to back and then also adjust the backrest front to back. Um, but you can't go up and down, which is the only real downside that I can think of to the seating position in the truck. Now, one thing to note, when you go up in trim levels and you start adding the moonroof up here, that does take away about two inches of headroom. So again, if you're tall like me, six foot three, that could pose to be a little bit uncomfortable as you might feel a little claustrophobic having that only you know, half an inch or an inch above your head. It really wouldn't have been a deal breaker to me had I went to upgrade into something like the TRD Sport or the TRD Off-Road. Now, sitting in the interior, you're gonna feel very comfortable and at home if you've ever owned a Toyota product. Even if you haven't, everything is kind of exactly where you think it should be. All of the buttons on the steering wheel are right at your thumb tips. If you're somebody who likes to drive with both hands on the wheel, as you should, you'll notice that your thumbs can pretty much hit everything without having to shift positions from the nine and three position, which is my comfortable hand position on the wheel. But if you're a 10 and two driver, obviously you're going to have to take your hand and press your buttons, but that's pretty standard stuff. Now on the steering wheel, you'll notice that you have your radio controls, which are on the left side of the steering wheel. You've got your volume controls left and right, left for down volume, right for up volume on the up and down, you have track forward and track back. So you can switch your music. You can change the pre-selected radio stations that you have set in the system. On the lower portion of the left side of the steering wheel, you then have your phone buttons, which would be your answer and hang up. There is also a button for muting the radio or whatever audio is coming through your stereo. And then there's also a button for voice activation, which is used with your phone if you have it plugged into Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. On the right side of your steering wheel, you'll see that you have four directional arrows. These are actually used to control your 
little TFT monitor that's wedged between your two gauge clusters. That gives you all sorts of digital driving information like your digital speedometer, your distance to an empty fuel tank, your average tank fuel economy, which actually updates every time you fill up your truck. And then you also get the current fuel economy, trip distance, trip elapsed time. And then you also have this feature that is time until rest. If you start driving and you've been going for a while and you start to get a little lazy behind the wheel, maybe you're starting to fall asleep. This will actually give you a rating of green, yellow, and red, of whether or not you should pull over and take a rest, maybe let someone else drive if somebody can, or maybe you're just a bad driver and it doesn't know any better so you continue on. Inside of this monitor as well, you can see when your cruise control is turned on or off and when your lane departure alert is turned on or off. No, this Toyota Tacoma SR will not steer for you, but it will use the video camera up here to read the lines in the road and tell you if you're crossing over a line. It'll beep at you. I typically drive with this feature off on short trips just because if you get too close to a line, say you have the sensitivity, which is adjustable, set too high, it will beep at you a lot. So I tend to keep that off unless I'm going on a highway for a long time. So you'll notice that you have a very basic gauge cluster. You have your speedometer, your fuel gauge, your temperature gauge, and then also your tachometer. That's it. Very simple, straightforward, to the point, nice big symbols and big letters, so that you'll never have an issue judging what your vehicle is doing while driving. Now, if we come over here to the center console, we've got a nice little monitor in here that is touchscreen, along with all of the buttons that you'd ever need to control it without using the touchscreen. Things like home to take you to this screen here, things like menu to open up the apps that you can use, including audio, phone, apps if you download any. Otherwise, it has settings or setup and projection. Now, projection is really cool because if you take your Android or Apple product, you can plug it in via the USB port on the dashboard. And after you install the Apple CarPlay or Android app, you will be able to mirror your phone and apps that work with the system right up on your screen so that you don't have to worry about using your phone while driving. It will read text messages to you. You can use this with your choice of navigation apps like Google Maps or Apple Maps. And you can also use it with Spotify, Pandora, and a few other things that, well, like Yelp, I don't really find necessary to use in the car, but they have it in there anyways. Now you do have a map button on this unit here. Now this truck does not come with factory navigation, but when you hit that with your phone plugged in, it will automatically pull up Apple or Google Maps so that you can use your navigation right there without ever having to touch the phone. While you're moving, you have to use voice controls to enter in a destination, but while you're parked, it is a fully functioning Google or Apple Maps that you can use in junction with your phone to get where you need to go. Now, coming down below the screen, you've got your four-wheel drive. If you have a four-wheel drive version like I do, it is a on-the-fly switch, so you go from two-wheel drive to four high while you're moving, and it just activates and you continue on your way. So it's very nice for things like snowstorms or anything like that where you might need to go from two-wheel drive to four high in a pinch. Otherwise, it does have four low with automatic limited slip diff that will engage as needed. That is something that you have to park the vehicle for so you can switch it into four low. And you can't go very fast in four low, but if you know anything about trucks, obviously that's firsthand knowledge. Now, next to the four-wheel drive, you'll notice that you have a button that looks like a rectangle with a couple of squiggly lines or squiggly arrows going up it. That is for your heated mirrors. Now, this base model truck includes heated mirrors, so in places like Wisconsin or other states that get a lot of snow and very cold weather, you can use that and not have to worry about the risk of damaging your mirrors with a scraper. Instead, you just press this button, it heats up very quickly, and you're on the road with full visibility through your mirrors. Next to that is going to be a very basic selection of dials and buttons to use the interior heating and cooling of the truck. It is, again, very basic. You get your low, high, and a few clicks in between for your fans. You have your AC button, and then you have your temperature dial, interior circulation, and then, of course, your mode switch. Now, something interesting to note up here in the front of the truck is you have a whopping total of seven cup holders up here. I don't know why, I don't know who drinks that many liquids, but you have the ability to do if needed. You have two in each door, two right here underneath the center console, and one right here behind the shifter. 
Now, speaking of the shifter, you have park, reverse, neutral, drive, just like you're used to, and then you can flip it over into S, which is for sport or maybe sequential. You can use that to slide up for an upshift, down for a downshift, and it may not be a sporty vehicle. However, I found myself using that feature a lot in the snow, especially in rear wheel drive with the open differential in the back end. It was nice to be able to up a couple of gears to get a little bit of a slower start when you're on ice or slippery slush. Now, something else interesting to note about this truck is you have a handbrake or emergency brake that is not a kick pedal, it's not electronic, you still have the pull handle here, just like you imagine in older cars. Why it's in a truck? I don't know, but I really enjoy it. I think it's really neat. It helps build some rigidity to the truck as it doesn't feel like it's too overwhelmingly filled with electronics. It's still manual, it feels good. Speaking of manual, you can still get this truck in a manual if you would like. However, most dealerships don't stock those. You'll have to special order them, but I think that is really cool that you can still buy a Toyota Tacoma with three pedals and a gearbox of which you get to move around the gear lever. Now here in the back of the truck, you're going to see that I'm a little cramped. I've got my seat up front in my typical seated position, which is almost all of the way back because I'm tall. And I gotta say, I still could do this on a short trip. For a long-term trip, it would probably get a little painful because your knees are really tucked in. Um, but if you're a shorter person, somebody maybe six feet or less back here, you'd probably be able to do it just fine. Now besides the seating position back here, you can take and flip the bottom seat forward and then you can fold the back of the seat down and behind there you have a nice plastic cargo space which allows you to place a ton of cargo back here. I mean, once you open this up, there is a ton of room. I typically leave these seats down all the time unless I have somebody that needs a ride or if I'm going somewhere with multiple people. Otherwise, I leave this cargo space open just because it is so useful and there's a ton of space back here. For a small truck, this is absolutely awesome. Um, going on a trip up north, I drive about four hours to the property that we vacation at and I can load my bed with all of our fun outdoor gear and keep all of our electronics and things inside of here and still have space to see out the back window. All right, so now that we're behind the wheel of the 2020 Tacoma SR, I've got to say, after owning this for about nine months, I still enjoy driving it every time I get in the driver's seat. It's not loud, it's not clunky, it's a smooth driving experience, it's quiet. The engine noise is minimal in the cabin. When you're going down the highway, you really don't hear much wind at all, and only do you hear the engine under heavy acceleration, which obviously for fuel economy, I don't really get into unless I really need to. This truck gets 17 miles per gallon in the city, 24 on the highway, which is not bad for a truck of this size with a 3.5 liter V6. Um, and honestly, if you baby it and you drive it like a grandpa, you'll definitely see higher miles per gallon than that. I've actually hit on the highway almost 30 miles per gallon on an average during a trip with a tailwind, of course. Now, one thing that this truck doesn't have is in the mirrors is blind spot monitoring. Um, but you do have a few things that work while you're driving for you, like lane keep assist, which if you cross over a line without your blinker on, it'll beep at you to warn you that you crossed that line, just in case you might be getting a little tired or inattentive, it'll alert you so that you stay in your lane all the time. Because trust me, it is an annoying, obnoxious noise and you wanna make sure that you're doing everything in your power to keep that noise off. Something I really like about this feature, unlike something like my wife's car, again, a Volkswagen Jetta, is when you come up to a stop, there is no auto start stop feature on this truck. It is always running all the time. The people in California may not like that, but I've got to say for comfortability and reliability purposes, that is one of my favorite features as a lot of American trucks move over into having that feature on most of their cars. Now here we're gonna hit this train track. Feels a little like a truck, but it's smooth. It floats right over it. It's not jarring, it doesn't hurt. I love it. 
Now in relation to the seating position of how I'm seated as a six foot three person, I like that you can see up over the hood. The hood looks very nice and short. You've got a ton of visibility over small cars in traffic, um, as you'd expect from a truck nonetheless. But one of the best parts about this seating position is it is a little bit more car-like. It's not so much upright like you'd expect out of other trucks of this size. Everything is comfortable. I can reach the steering wheel just fine. I can sit back and relax with my head on the headrest without feeling like I'm forcing myself to sit in this position. Overall, I've taken this on some very long trips and I've gotta say, hey, it's comfortable. For what one might deem a work truck, it's seriously comfortable. Now when it comes to steering the truck, there is a little bit of play when you go to steer. It's got very nice electric steering, but it's not like a sports car. It's not going to have that quick, rapid turning power. Um, it's very smooth. It's very slow, I would say. However, if you really need to make a quick adjustment in an emergency situation, it's still going to be there. It's just something you notice at lower speeds. Um, as far as acceleration in the truck, when you're not towing anything, it does get up and boogie pretty quick. I don't know the zero to 60 time. I don't think anyone really cares about that when talking about a light truck that's typically used for hauling things or just driving it to and from work or to the grocery store. But I do know that the 3.5 liter V6 without load can definitely put power down when you need it. Now again, I will reiterate, it's not a sports car. So some truck guys that might be used to having a V8 or a turbo diesel will say that this is very sluggish, but I think for the everyday driver, it's fast enough for what you're going to need on a day-to-day -day basis. Now I've got to say, when it comes to drivability of the truck, we're coming into some corners here. And of course we're not going that fast. We're going about 25, 30 miles an hour but it's very nimble. It really doesn't handle corners like a truck. It feels like you're in a car. Now, of course, with the higher ground clearance, you'll have some body roll, but that's natural for a vehicle of this size. But it seems like it really likes to hug the corners and really lives up to that SR or Sport Rally name. Now, when we go over bumps like that railroad track, something to note is it's very comfortable, it floats. It's not a jarring, rough, truck-like experience. It actually floats over. The suspension works really well, even on the base model without those upgraded off-road or sport suspension pieces. Now, something I'm reminding myself of as we drive through downtown here, this truck is not a full-size truck. It sits up tall like a full-size truck, but having the short bed in back and a little bit less width allows you to park in smaller parking situations, much like parking downtown right on the main drag instead of having to struggle to find a parking lot somewhere. You know, I've got to say I've driven a lot of trucks living in Wisconsin and doing a lot of outdoorsy things, but I've got to put it to Toyota. They did such a really good job at building a light truck that performs well and drives well in so many different scenarios. I mean, whether you're off-road or on the street, driving slow or fast on the highway, I mean, the controllability in this thing is just impeccable. Now on the topic of acceleration, something that's really nice about this V6 is that when you need it, it'll go. Um, it's, it's not a sports car, it's not impeccably fast, but it does have acceleration when you need it. I know a lot of people say that they're sluggish, that they are not quick at all. I would have to disagree. I would say that for the size of the vehicle, the weight of the vehicle, and the power to weight ratio, it doesn't do so bad. Now, something I really like about this truck is the cornering radius. I mean, you can make such tight turns with this thing, whether you're in a parking lot or in a weird adjacent street like that was, it doesn't take too much room to turn this thing around. Um, it really negates the need for you know certain types of multi-point turns in some scenarios and just really helps with the overall controllability of the truck from top to bottom. For a small light truck, it's, it's an enjoyable truck. It's an enjoyable thing to drive. You know, a lot of people go, ah, I guess I'll take the truck or, you know, oh, I gotta take the truck today. I find that with this thing, it's not an inconvenience. There's nothing wrong with it. There's just, it's drivable, it's comfortable, 
and it gets you where you want to go and will do for 400,000 miles without an issue because we all know that the Toyota Tacoma, amongst other Toyota vehicles, are incredibly reliable. I can't really find anything wrong with it that would make me not want to own it. I think my wife and I were talking about how we wanted to keep this thing for a couple of years and maybe upgrade down the road, but for everything that we need, unless something else comes up, this thing checks all of the boxes. I can tow all of our fun toys that we plan on buying. I can drive in the deep, heavy snow that comes every year here in Wisconsin. I can drive off-road while we're camping with it. And I can fit everything in it that I'd ever need to fit. Again, I can't really think of a reason why I'd want to get rid of this truck. I think this thing is going to stay in my family for a very long time. Now at this part in the video, I'd usually break down a couple of the negatives as I drive, but with this truck, I really can't think of any negatives that would be a deal breaker for me on this truck. Some of the downsides is, is that the SR comes with steel wheels that are not very stylish by any means, but you can always replace those. It's a truck and there's plenty of aftermarket truck part dealers that can help you get wheels you really like versus just stock factory options. Um, the seating position, although I said is great and comfortable, the only thing I wish they'd add for the driver's seat is the ability to raise and lower the seat. Other than that, I really can't think of much. The Android Auto and Apple CarPlay being available on the base model is an awesome touch, especially if you're techie or you need things like navigation but don't want to pay extra for it to be in the vehicle. I gotta say, I'm kind of in love with this truck if you haven't been able to tell already. Something that I feel like some people might not like is the short bed, and I get that. For most truck people, especially here in Wisconsin, a long bed is what is wanted by those truck buyers, but if you're just somebody upgrading to have something a little bit more capable for your weekends, or you know, you're, you don't wanna rely on other people for having trucks to haul small things, I mean, there really is no reason that this shouldn't be towards the top of your list of vehicles to look at. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up this video today, guys. If you like what you saw, please make sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube, but also check out Rotorama on Facebook and Instagram, as well as head on over to our website, rotorama.com, to stay up to date with all things automotive that I can produce. Keep your eyes peeled, as this is our first video here for Rotorama, but also, in the plans, we'll have podcasts, blog articles, more videos, pretty much everything under the sun that I can self-produce here for this YouTube channel and website. I'm gonna try and work on here throughout the summer. So again, if you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button, follow me on social media, and also if you have any friends looking for a small pickup truck such as this one, you should share this video with them so that they can see my thoughts on the truck after owning it for about almost a year now. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.